Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is Saturday, September the 21st, 2019. So if news breaks after the date of this video, you want to take that into account in your bet calculation. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, we might have forgotten one of the defining biggest heavyweight title fights in recent memory, right? Depending on what side of the aisle you're on, this fight was very intriguing. Let's talk about something that can't be disputed because I'm sure you and I are going to dispute a lot. But in that first Deontay Wilder, Luis Ortiz fight, what cannot be disputed were the scorecards of the judges at the time of the stoppage. Right? Understand, all three judges had the same score. At the time of the stoppage, they had Deontay Wilder ahead in the fight, 85 to 84. Right, folks? The fight stopped in the 10th round. This means that an older fighter, Southpaw Luis Ortiz, had this fight still being competitive at the start of the 10th round. Right? All three judges only had Wilder ahead by one round. Now understand, this is a fight in which Ortiz hits the canvas in round five. But yet, even with the knockdown, the judges had this fight Razor close. Now, let's just talk odds for a moment because it's very important. As I make this video, FanDuel, believe it or not, has Luis Ortiz as a plus 409 underdog. Right? A greater than 4 to 1 underdog. Two other outfits. Just go to oddschecker.com and check it out. Two other outfits have Luis Ortiz as a three and a half to one underdog. Three and a half to one. Now we just saw Otto Wallen challenge Tyson Fury. Right? If those two were to fight again, Just mentally think. What percentage of the time would you expect Tyson Fury to win that fight? Right? Keep in mind, Fury just won the fight by unanimous decision. By several rounds. Not one round. By several rounds on the judges' scorecards. Several. But if these two fought again, I'm guessing many people would say, okay, well, Fury would win two out of three. Right? 66 and two-thirds percent versus 33 and a third percent. You would understand that if you ventured north of that, you would really be underestimating and undervaluing a guy who was literally just a doctor's decision away from winning the heavyweight title. You saw in that Fury fight that Valen, quite frankly, was the better athlete. Right? You saw that Valen was hanging around. In fact, I thought Valen won the 12th round. If Valen just fought that fight a little bit differently, who knows what could have happened in that fight. Well, understand, when it comes to Wilder Luis Ortiz, and I know Wilder just looks spectacular, 
against Dominique Brazil. I know there's some wilder fights on film where guys are getting laid out and, you know, you're thinking, my goodness, Wilder has punching power. Right? I saw the Arthur Spielka knockout as it happened. And I was fearful as to whether Spielka would ever open his eyes again. Right? Wilder KOing Bermain Stavern. Stavern doesn't even know that he was hit on the chin. He's confused. He's disoriented in the first round. I get Wilder's punching power. The highlights are as good as they could be. Right? Dominique Brazil, one minute's completely awake, completely alert. The next minute, he's on the canvas. You understand that fight is over. Right? The referee stops the fight. You're grateful the referee stopped the fight. Dominique Brazil gets to see his family for another day. I get it. But understand, you cannot have a fight as competitive as the first Wilder Ortiz fight. You don't have to believe me. And quite frankly, I thought Luis Ortiz was ahead at the end of the fight. You don't have to believe me. You could believe the official judges who curiously gave Wilder several of the early rounds. Right? They had the fight a one-round fight at the start of the 10th round. Right? A one-round fight. So understand how ridiculous it is. Just flat out ridiculous. When reputable betting outfits have Luis Ortiz as a plus 350. Understand, that gives Wilder a greater than 75% chance of winning the fight. You wouldn't give Fury a greater than 75% chance of winning the Otto Wallen rematch. And here he is against the guy who, in the first fight, was a doctor's decision away. A doctor's decision away from winning the title. And understand, the Wilder scenario in that first fight is worse. Far worse than the Fury situation in the Valen fight. In the Fury fight, the doctor is looking at a cut. The doctor is not questioning Fury's mental faculties. The doctor doesn't believe Fury's been beaten up and might be at risk of getting severely hurt because he's concussed. No, we all think Fury's alert. The question is whether or not this cut is blinding him in one eye, right? And whether this cut is bad enough where we have to stop the fight to make sure the guy's not permanently disfigured to the point where the rest of his life is negatively impacted. Well, understand, the inquiry in the Wilder-Ortiz fight is different. Wilder looks fine. Wilder doesn't have a bad cut that's bleeding into his eye and stuff like that. It's just that Wilder got the bejesus beaten out of him so severely in the round before that the doctor and the referee needed to figure out if Wilder was concussed. If he was awake enough to participate in the rest of the fight whether he was too beaten up enough and had lost too much of his consciousness to actually continue. So understand, Luis Ortiz didn't just convince the judges that he was a competitive opponent over the first nine rounds of the first Wilder fight. He convinced the ref and the doctor that there was a question on whether Wilder was physically able to continue at a time when Wilder didn't have a bad cut that was bleeding. 
right? The question was, had Ortiz hurt Wilder enough where Wilder was too woozy to continue the fight? Life turns on these moments. Wilder still has his title. Fury still has his title. Right? They never asked Fury, how many fingers am I holding up? Right? Fury's corner gets away with a lie. Can he see out of the eye? Yeah, he can see. He can see. <coughs> right? Nobody, you know, at my DMV, and keep in mind, at the DMV, I'm not there bleeding. Right? At, at my DMV, they're tougher on me, on eye tests than they were on Fury in his heavyweight title fight. At the DMV, they actually tell me things like, close one eye. Right? So I'm there like this, trying to say, yeah, that, that last line says C, Z, E. Right? You mean to tell me in a heavyweight title fight, no one even asks Fury to close an eye. To count fingers, which is a hell of a lot easier, folks, than reading letters off an eye chart. Well, think about how ridiculous the Wilder fight was. The Wilder fight's even more ridiculous to me. Okay, I see Wilder looking woozy, getting clubbed around. So, you know what I decide to do if I'm the ref and doctor? I decide to check him out after he's had a minute to sit on his stool, to talk with his corner, to recover. You think if you're looking woozy behind the wheel of your car and the cops pull you over, do you think before they ask you to walk in a line, do you think you'd be able to say, hey, fellas, give me a minute? You think the cops going to sit around and go, look at his watch and talk to his buddy for a minute? You think they're going to give you a minute to clear your head? Folks, they did in a heavyweight title fight. So forgive me, this bet makes itself. I saw a competitive title fight. Wilder knocks Ortiz down twice in the 10th round. Okay, great. I remember the first nine rounds of this fight. I thought they were highly competitive. I look at the scoring of the fight, all three judges thought it was highly competitive. I look at the doctor and the ref looking at Wilder after he shellacked the round before and has had a minute to clear his head. And I sense the concern in the ring. I realize that at that moment, Wilder's title reign. And it's a multi-year reign, literally hung on the doctor's decision. Literally. Let's also be real, too. I know Wilder walks through Dominique Brazil, no question about it, right? I'm not here to say Brazil won that fight. But all I'm saying is, what exactly did that prove to you? Right? Wilder came out, flashed a A-plus right hand, knocked out Brazil. Okay, great. That doesn't show you that Wilder has solved the Southpaw puzzle that is Luis Ortiz. It just doesn't. Let me say this too. Ortiz starts the fight at the right angle. Let's say I'm Wilder. Ortiz is at 10 o'clock. Ortiz in the early rounds is breathtaking. Wilder has a problem with the angles. Right? The person who really hurt Ortiz in this fight was Luis Ortiz. It's a shot at the heavyweight title. Ortiz comes in, he has a game plan. He's going to Wilder's body. He's off at the side. 
you know what happens. Ortiz then senses that he's doing well. Starts to get a little bit confident. As confident as a guy could get when he gets drilled in the fifth round and goes down. Right? But then you notice Ortiz goes from 10 o'clock. Look at the film. Goes from 10 o'clock relative to Wilder. Right? Then Ortiz starts to get to 11 o'clock. Then Ortiz starts to be at 12 o'clock in front of one of the biggest punchers pound for pound in boxing. Right? Also, look at Ortiz. He's going to Wilder's body effectively. He's cagey. He's not too close to get clinched. Right? A fighter can do only so much to hide their body. Right? They can put their head on a swivel. Have you try to find their head. But when you're as tall as Deontay Wilder, it's very hard to hide your entire body. But you'll notice Ortiz, and this is the way fights are, gets caught up in the moment. He starts swinging for Wilder's head. When body shots could have proved to be the difference. Folks, he's only down by one round on the judges' scorecards. One round. Let me just tell you too. When you have a rematch and the first fight was unexpectedly close, the second fight looks different. Right? The first fight, we all headed into that first fight and we thought, oh, come on, Ortiz is in his late 30s. Wilder's a multi-year champ. Wilder's the favorite. Right this time, just like if Fury were to fight Otto Wallen again, this time we go in and we're thinking, you know what? If Ortiz just changed things a little bit, right? If Wilder isn't careful this time, if the doctor doesn't give Wilder a full minute to recover before looking at him. Maybe this outcome could be different. So the first time, you have some rounds that I thought Ortiz wins if it's a level playing field. You and I know in boxing it's rarely level. One fighter is the A side. One fighter is a title holder. One fighter has the big promotional deal. One fighter is the top name on the fight poster before the fight. Right, certain guys enter the ring and you look at them and you're just expecting them to do great things. Right, when you see Wilder, aren't you thinking about dramatic chaos? Aren't you saying to yourself, man, how's Wilder going to knock this guy out? Well, for rematches, it's different, isn't it? Now you're going to look at the fight, and you're going to look at the underdog, and you're going to say, oh, man, is this Luis Ortiz's night? Can a 40-year-old become heavyweight champion for the first time? Understand, Luis Ortiz goes several rounds. Goes the distance against Christian Hammer. That's his last fight. Makes it into the 10th round against Travis Kaufman. Wins that fight by stoppage. But understand, Luis Ortiz has been going rounds. At this stage of the game for him, <coughs> that's more important than winning fights by first round KO. Because this fight against Wilder might go some rounds. Didn't the first fight make it into the 10th? The play I like here is Luis Ortiz to win the fight. Folks, you're getting paid for it, aren't you? Plus 350? You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Let me say too, 
I have an earlier video here online where a sparring partner talked about how when he sparred with Wilder, Wilder was a different fighter. Wilder was on his back foot. Wilder had a lot of head movement. Wilder threw a lot of jabs. Wilder certainly has that in his arsenal. Right? Even though in most fights, Wilder's front foot heavy, right hand, straight right hand, KO. Right? Ortiz is a southpaw. If Wilder gets on his back foot, great. That means the fight's going to go a few rounds. But understand, I don't believe Wilder has confidence in his back foot game. He'll have even less confidence against the southpaw, Luis Ortiz. Right? Understand, Luis Ortiz moves a lot better than Bermain's to Ver. Folks, his feet are the dancing feet in the Christian Hammer fight. Right? I like Ortiz to win the fight, plus 350. Hedge, at FanDuel, he's a plus 409. Hedged with Wilder by KO. I'll agree. It's a devastating reality when two guys enter the ring and they both know that one man has already shown that he can stop the other man. Right? I believe Ortiz is savvy, extensive, amateur pedigree, knows that he put himself in harm's way by fighting at 11 and 12 o'clock against Deontay Wilder. He was right in line for Wilder's right hand. Right? Not so much at 10 o'clock. If Ortiz can smother Wilder, right, come in on Wilder's left side. If Ortiz can force Wilder to box him, I believe he has a real shot. Certainly a much better than plus 350 shot, a real shot at the heavyweight title. I picked him to beat Wilder in the first fight. I tip my hat to the long reigning champ who won that match I'm picking Luis Ortiz in the rematch some of us are just stubborn that way I'll say this it's an easy play for me when you say plus 350 odds in other words if it's a straight up fight I might not pick Ortiz you say, Dwyer, I've given you a plus 350. That's what I think to myself. Great, that gives me money I can actually throw on a Wilder by KO hedge. So I can have Wilder by KO and make a nice profit. If Ortiz wins, I'm getting a plus 350. I like that play. Let me also say this too. Tyson Fury could have picked a lot of fighters to fight against for his last match. Otto Wallen was not his mandatory. Understand, the lineal heavyweight champion <coughs> doesn't have a sanctioning body mandatory. Right? It's really the best position in the division. So Tyson Fury could have picked whoever he wanted to fight. He's surrounded by people like Bob Arum. Right? Grandmasters who have been in the sport for decades. Tyson Fury picked a southpaw. Think about that. Pick the southpaw. Luis Ortiz is a, is a southpaw. I believe the Fury people quietly know that this fight, regardless of what the sports books are telling you, carries significant risk. Significant risk for Deontay Wilder. Right? Significant risk. Right? I think Ortiz is a live underdog. Understand, too. The world now knows that Anthony Joshua, for all the great highlights, for all the great opponents he's beaten, and let's give him props. Right? A mandatory, depending on the ruling in the drug hearing that's coming up. 
um, Dylan White, Josh was already beaten. Right? In terms of Olympic gold medalists who've been heavyweight champion, Josh was already beaten two of them. Vladimir Klitschko and Alexander Povetkin. Right? Let's give Joshua credit. Joshua beat an unbeaten, currently reigning heavyweight champion in Joseph Parker. Right? But the bottom line was Joshua is green. You saw that in the Andy Ruiz fight. At high volume, Joshua's defense disappears. Joshua can't clinch a guy. Right, Joshua, in terms of ring placement, let's just say Andy Ruiz had him up against the ropes in multiple rounds. Right, by contrast, according to history, Rocky Marciano, murderous puncher, front foot heavy guy, high volume guy, never gets Ezra Charles's back to touch the ropes for the first 14 rounds of their first fight, right? Anthony Joshua is fighting Andy Ruiz, a huge underdog. His back's against the ropes. He doesn't know what to do with his back against the ropes, right? Joshua is standing upright. He's getting hit with shots. Now, Luis Ortiz is from the Cuban Amateur Boxing School, right? You know them. I can tell you, when I was a kid, there was an open discussion on who would win a fight. Cuban Olympic gold medalist Teofilo Stevenson against Muhammad Ali. Right, there was a lot of discussion about putting that fight on. Think about all the great Cubans in the boxing world now. Eris Landi Lara is well in his 30s, folks. He gave Canelo one of his toughest fights. He still has a title at 154. Right? Just think about all the Cubans in the last 30 years, right? Joel Casamayor. You remember when he was in his prime? Dangerous. Now here you have Luis Ortiz, Cuban heavyweight. I'm just telling you, Cuba, rich boxing tradition. Cuban heavyweight, big time pedigree. He's now in his 40s. Right Before you overemphasize the age, realizing that this is the heavyweight division where guys age more slowly. How old was Klitschko when Klitschko fought Joshua? Didn't that fight make it into the later rounds? Right. What I want people to do is to focus on skill level. I have no doubt that Luis Ortiz looked at films of Anthony Joshua and knew he had an excellent shot on Joshua. All you have to do is Google Ortiz's comments after the Joshua Klitschko fight. I'm telling you, Ortiz, like me, thought Klitschko was winning that fight at the time of the stoppage. The Joshua people offered Ortiz that fight. When you're 39, 40 years old in boxing, you know your chances are limited. They don't come around that often. You don't have time to play games. A young green, defensively challenged heavyweight with several of the belts wanted to fight Luis Ortiz. Ortiz pivoted. There's one guy he has unfinished business with. It's a guy he's firmly convinced he can beat. And it's the guy who knocked him down three times the first time they fought. It's Deontay Wilder. This belt, the WBC belt, means more to Luis Ortiz than beating Anthony Joshua in a fight that would have taken place in New York City. If you're a gambler and you firmly believe that a challenger to the heavyweight title completely believes that he's been in the ring with the champ and he knows he can beat the champ. 
then when the casino says to you, I'll give you a plus 350, your response should be, I'll take it. By the way, let me hedge it with Wilder by KO. That's how I see this fight. I think Ortiz is a live dog. I like Ortiz to win the fight at a plus 350. Hell, hedged with Wilder by KO. But, understand the risk involved. The first fight makes it to the 10th round. The judges had Wilder ahead by one round. Right? If Wilder, the longest reigning heavyweight champion, wins the fight by decision, you lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.